Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we're working on an 04 Hyundai Tucson with a 2 liter engine. The customer complaint is the check engine light is on and it has got a loss of power. So let's diagnose this together. I drove the car and confirmed the customer complaint. It is low on power and the check engine light is on. So let's hook up a scan tool and see if there are any codes stored that can lead us into the right direction. We've got two fault codes stored in our mass airflow circuit. One circuit out of range and one signal low. Also SureTrack, which is installed on my Snap-on scan tool, is telling us that the most commonly replaced part to solve this problem is the mass airflow sensor. If you're using Snap-on SureTrack, or any database for that matter, don't let it be a source for you to go and change parts. Let it be a guide to lead you into the right direction and for you to know what to check first. We're going to do some measurements at the mass airflow sensor, but before we do that, let's learn more about them. In this video, we will be talking about the analog mass airflow sensor. We will talk about the digital type in another video. The mass airflow sensor is located in the air intake duct after the air filter. The mass airflow sensor measures the volume of air entering the engine and converts that measurement into a signal voltage. The control unit interprets the signal voltage and determines the mass of air drawn into the engine in grams per second. Here you see a diagram symbol for the mass airflow sensor. The symbol indicates that the mass airflow sensor has got three terminals. It has got a power supply, a ground and a signal wire. The signal wire goes to the control unit. With this slider we can increase and decrease the amount of air entering the engine. Now let's see what happens to the signal voltage at point B when we increase the air going into the engine. Let's increase the air and we see the signal voltage going up. Let's increase it even more and we can see the voltage gets even higher. Now let's decrease the airflow and you can see it slowing down in the animation and we see the signal voltage going down again. The measuring element is positioned in the airflow and consists of two temperature dependent resistors mounted on a support. One of the resistors is a PTC heating element, while the other is an NTC resistor that measures the temperature of the air. The electronic circuit keeps the temperature of the PTC heating element at a constant level. The current required to keep the element at that constant temperature depends upon the magnitude of air flowing over it. The diagram shows the PTC and the NTC resistor in a resistor bridge. The resistance values are chosen in a manner that when the heating element is heated up and at the right temperature the voltages at point A and point B are exactly the same. 
In the diagram, we also see an amplifier. The amplifier reacts to a difference in voltage between point A and point B. When there is a difference in voltage between point A and point B, the amplifier reacts by changing the output voltage. The output voltage is also the supply voltage for the resistor bridge. When the heating element is at the right temperature, the voltages at point A and point B will be exactly the same. But when the engine is running, the airflow causes the sensor to cool down. Because this is a PTC resistor, the resistance will drop and the voltage at point A will become higher. When the voltage at point A gets higher than point B, the resistor bridge will be out of balance. Because of the difference in voltage between point A and point B, the amplifier will increase its output voltage. The output voltage of the amplifier is also the power supply to our resistor bridge. When our supply voltage gets higher, the current running through the resistor also gets higher. This warms our resistor back up again. When the resistor reaches its normal temperature, the resistance also returns to normal. This causes the voltage at point A to be the same as at point B again. And our resistor bridge is balanced again. Now let me try to explain with this animation. With this slider we can increase and decrease the airflow through the air mass meter. When we start out the voltage at point A and point B will be exactly the same. As I increase the airflow, the airflow will cool down the heating element. When the heating element cools down, its resistance will drop because it is a PTC resistor. As its resistance drops, the voltage at point A will go up. When the voltage at point A will go up, there will be a difference between point A and point B. The amplifier will react by increasing its output voltage. When the output voltage goes up, the current flow through our resistor also goes up, it heats back up, the resistance also goes back up, and the voltages equalize again. Now let's try it. Let's go to maximum airflow. Now pay attention because this is going to be fast. Maximum airflow, resistance goes down, voltage at point A goes up, and the output voltage of the amplifier also goes up. After a while, voltage at point A and point B equalize again because the element heats back up because of the higher voltage. Now let's go down again and we will see the opposite thing happening. Resistance goes up, voltage goes down, output voltage goes down, and A and B equalize again. Now let's go up again. Things start to equalize again. But the moral of the story is, the higher the airflow, the higher the output voltage. Now that we've learned about the fundamentals of mass airflow sensors, we can start doing some checks. The first and most easy check we can do is take a look at the scan data. I'm going to hit the throttle while you guys are going to take a look at the data pit of the mass airflow sensor and see if it is responsive.
That line you were looking at was the airflow rate in grams per second. As I revved the engine, we should have seen more air coming into it, but we were seeing a flat line. So now we know the PCM is getting no feedback from that sensor. In the next step, we're gonna do some physical checks at the mass airflow sensor itself. Before we can start doing measurements, let's get this plastic cover up. And what we have is a very typical five wire mass airflow sensor. There are two wires for the integrated temperature sensor and three wires for the mass airflow sensor. Now I took a look at the wiring diagram and this is our sensor ground, our power, and the gray wire is the signal wire going to the PCM. Now for the sensor to function properly, it needs a good power and ground. In the next step, we're gonna check the power and ground using a test light. Now in my previous videos, you've seen me use this test light. And although it served me well for many years, I got a lot of comments on it. I even got called by Leon from the Budget and Legged Garage channel and he told me, Dan, you've got all this nice equipment, why don't you get a proper test light? He said, you know what? I'm gonna send you one. And he did. Thank you, Leon, it's fantastic. Now, if you don't know Leon's channel, don't go there. And if you do know his channel, you know why not to go there. <laughs> I'm kidding, Leon is fantastic, and I will leave a link in the description of this video to his channel. And you know, Leon, I'm just telling this because you gave me this test light, right? Now, let's start out by checking the sensor ground which is the first wire. Now let's connect the test light to battery positive. And if we have got a good ground, our test light should light up. And it does. Now let's check the second wire, which should be our sensor feed. Relocate our test light to battery negative. And if we've got a good power, the test light should light up, and it does. So power and ground confirmed. We've got a good power and we have got a good ground. So our sensor should be able to generate a good signal. In the next step, we're going to take a look at the signal with a scope. In my next few videos, I'll be checking out the car scope Viso made by Ditex. It's a two-channel handheld oscilloscope with a color touchscreen and a guidance component test. Now it hasn't got the same specifications as a Pico or a GMTO scope, but it's also in a completely different price range. So if you want to learn more, keep watching my videos or check out the link in the description of this video. Let's select lab scope. You can go to automotive and sensors and then take mass airflow sensor. But I also want to check the power and ground again with the scope. So I'll go to lab scope, press play. First wire, our ground. Second wire, our feed wire. And we see battery voltage over here, so that's okay. And the third wire, should be our sensor signal. We don't see anything, so let's snap the throttle. And no change. Now the great thing about this scope is that we can also use it as a voltmeter. So I'm connected to channel A right now. Let's do my checks again. First wire, a ground, shows nothing. Second wire is our power feed. And indeed, the engine is running, so there's battery voltage right now. And our third wire, our signal, showing nothing. Let's snap the throttle again. Absolutely nothing. Now I'm pretty sure we've got a bad mass airflow sensor, just like SureTrack suggested to us. We used that as a guide, did some measurements, and now we're missing a signal. There could be a small possibility 
there's a break in the wire from where we back probed it to where it connects to the sensor. I know it's a very small possibility, but we want to be 100% sure. We don't want to make the customer pay for our mistakes. Now to test this, I'm going to use a sensor generator. I'm going to hook it up to the very end of our signal wire. I'm going to generate a signal and we're going to look at the scan data to see if the signal is making it into the PCM. Now before we start producing a signal, we've got to know what type of airflow sensor we are working on. Now this particular sensor uses a 0 to 5 volt DC voltage depending on the airflow rate. There are also digital ones that produce a frequency. We will talk about those when we run into a problem with them. For now, let's start the measurement and let's output a signal and let's go up and let's go down and as you can see the signal is making it all the way into the PCM. Now let's go up again and down and one more time up and down. Good power, good ground, no signal, wires checked all the way up to the PCM. I'm gonna call it a bad mass airflow sensor. So let's replace it with a brand new one. Replacing this sensor is gonna be quite straightforward. There's only one connector and two hose clamps. So let's disconnect the connector, loosen those two hose clamps, release the top of the air filter housing, get it out of the way, get the old sensor, out of there, replace it with a new one and the new one and the old one of course can go in two ways. But there is an arrow on the housing indicating the direction of airflow. So the arrow should face towards the engine. So like this, Now let's tighten those two hose clamps again. And finally, reconnect that connector. New mass airflow sensor installed. Now if we start up this engine and take a look at that mass airflow sensor data pit, what value can we expect? We can actually calculate this. If we know the engine size, RPM, manifold pressure and air temperature, we can get an estimate of the amount of air in grams per second that's going into the engine. Now be aware this method isn't perfect. One engine is designed to be more efficient than the other and when an engine gets older it also gets less efficient. So when you're working on an older car the actual value is probably going to be less than when it was new. First we gotta tell if you're working on a petrol or a diesel. Now right now we're working on a petrol. Then we've got to enter the engine's capacity. Right now we're working on an engine that's almost 2 liter. It's a 1997cc engine. Then we've got to enter the engine speed. Now all this data can be found in the data pits of your scan tool. Now this engine was idling at 700 rpm. The intake manifold pressure was 300 millibar 
at 700 RPM. The temperature was 21 degrees and we have got a four-cylinder engine. Now next thing, hit calculate and we can see our engine should take in at idle 2.9 grams per second. Now before we take a look at the data pit, let's hook up our scope again and let's see if this time we've got a signal. Let's select automotive, let's go to sensors, mass airflow and select the sensor you're working on. Now the great thing about this scope is that you don't need to be a pro on scopes or computers. Just hit play, back probe the signal wire, and hit the throttle. Now as you can see, our signal has returned. Now let's do the same thing while we take a look at our voltmeter. We're on channel A. Let's scale it down. Let's hit the throttle. Ah, ain't that great? Another great feature on this scope is when you're working on a sensor and you're not sure about how it works or what to expect, just hit help. And you will get a detailed description about the sensor and what to expect. Now this is not all. When you go back into the sensor menu and we selected the mass airflow sensor and you select help over there, you will get dozens of documents on how the sensor works, different kind of sensors, what to expect. Let's click this one and even the internals. Ain't that great? Now remember, we calculated that the flow rate for this engine should be about 2.9 grams per second. Now this engine is 14 years old, so it's probably a bit less efficient than when it left the factory. So that number is probably going to be a little bit less. But let's find out and hook up a scan tool. Two point six, two point seven grams per second. That's pretty close to what we calculated, right? Now I guess we can call this one a fix. But before we end this video, I want to do a little experiment. Remember how in my last video I was fooled by an aftermarket sensor on a Honda. Now that kind of got me thinking about aftermarket parts and especially aftermarket sensors. Can we trust them? and how accurate are they? So what I did, I purchased that same brand sensor that fooled me last time and I'm going to compare it to this known good sensor on this Hyundai. Let's start out by getting a voltage reading at idle of our known good sensor. Let's select voltmeter, let's scale it down, let's back probe the signal wire and let's see what we've got. We've got a little over one volt. Now let's swap out that known good sensor for our aftermarket one. Now this is our aftermarket one and this is the part number.
Let's tighten those clamps again. Now, the first thing I noticed right away is that this connector doesn't really properly fit. Look at this original sensor. It goes right in, but on this aftermarket one, yeah, I don't know. Let's see what we've got. Now let's get a voltage reading of our aftermarket sensor at idle. Let's select voltmeter again, scale it down, let's back probe the signal wire and let's see what we've got. Point 87. We just did a voltage reading on our aftermarket sensor at idle. It was reading 0.87 of a volt. Our original sensor was reading a little over one volt. That's quite a big difference. In the next step, we're gonna take a look at the data pit in grams per second of our aftermarket sensor. Now remember, our original sensor was reading 2.6, 2.7 grams per second. Now remember that our original sensor was reading 2.6, 2.7 grams per second. We calculated it should be 2.9 grams per second. Now let's take a look at the airflow rate of our aftermarket sensor. It is reading 1.7 grams per second at idle. Wow. Now I also took a look at the data pit of grams per second at 3000 RPM. The original sensor was reading about 9.2 grams per second at approximately 3000 RPM. The aftermarket sensor was reading 6.9 grams, also approximately at 3000 RPM. Now I would have guessed there would have been some difference, but that it was this big, I had no clue. Now I drove the car with both sensors. And to be honest, it wasn't until I drove the car with the original sensor, I knew there was something wrong with the aftermarket sensor. If I had only driven the car with the aftermarket sensor, I would have thought the car was driving okay-ish. Now, I hope you liked this video, and if you want to learn more, please subscribe to my channel. When you hit the little bell, you will get a notification each time I post a new video. Until then, diagnose Dan, fixed it again. See you next time, guys.